an ionizer lamp. Not just any ionizer lamp, but a fake ionizer lamp, which is a bit disappointing. I did some ionizers in recent videos and thought, well, let's go online and see what else there is in the way of ionizers just while I'm in the mood for it. And I found uh, this little one, a negative ion, one watt LED light bulb ionizer anion air purifier bulb. And it's based on the sort of standard little clipped together plastic bulbs, but they've got the carbon fibre emitter. And it's notable the carbon fibre emitter is not sticking out here, but I can see it inside. And uh, the I was expecting this to light up white. It turns out it's colour changing. Let, let me show you this. So if I screw this in to this lamp holder... It will not emit irons, but it does light up. It changes colour. It's a standard colour changing uh, LED inside. So let's take it to bits and I'll show you what's inside or what's not inside is the more important bit. It's odd because I did a video before. I'll just drop that down there. I did a video before where I looked at one of these and it did have a little potted uh, circular module inside it, but this one doesn't. So when it arrived, the carbon fibre thing here had been pulled too far back. It looks like during the construction there's a loop that they feed this roof from in there, solder it and then they pull it back into the unit and someone's obviously pulled it too far. Here is the white, white LED, the colour changing LED and a capacitive dropper. But whereas normally there'd be a bit of circuitry under here with for the ionizer, it's actually just coming through here and going into a pad that is not connected to anything. So although this looks like the ionizer wire that you'd normally get with these things, it is completely fake. It's not got any circuitry associated with it. So let's reverse engineer this otherwise and just uh, take a look at the circuitry that is active in it, which is basically for the LED. So the supply comes in and the first thing this one does is it goes to the capacitor via a resistor. So let's draw the supply here. This is just going to be a classic capacitive dropper. So say for instance this is a... I won't mark them live or neutral because it doesn't really matter. Uh, this one is going to a resistor which has the value red, red, brown, which is 2, 2 and 1, 0, so that's 220 ohms. Then that's going to the capacitor which is 224, 220 nanofarad, 400 volts. Nice they actually chose the correct voltage capacitor. The capacitor, does it have a discharge resistor? Yes, it does. It's got a little discharge, tiny little discharge resistor, surface mount, 105, 10 zero and five zeros, that's one megohm is the discharge resistor which is connected across the capacitor. That's so you don't get a tingle off the back of the lamp pins. And after that, it should go straight to the bridge rectifier. It goes straight to the bridge rectifier. Lazy bridge rectifier, but it is uh, all in one unit. It's not separate diodes. Uh, the other lead goes straight, I would guess, to... You know, it's got the connections for the ionizer. That's just annoying that they've just not bothered connecting it to save money. I may actually complain about this, just out of a, out of, you know, just a desire to complain about the fact that they've diddled me. So the output from this bridge rectifier has a position that almost looks like it's designed to be a wee fuse or something, or, or maybe a surface mount resistor, but they've actually just bridged it out of the link. It's got a Zener diode. Not sure what voltage that is, but it will be something possibly about 5, 12 volt. It doesn't really matter, actually. It's the open circuit voltage cross LED, so I'll make a wild guess it might be 5. And then it's got this little capacitor. Just a basic capacitive dropper here. Uh, the capacitor value is... Tiny text, where is it? It's always in the side you can't see. Uh, 100 megafarad, 16 volt. 100 megafarad is 16 volts. Then we've got the capacitor. The negative goes straight to the LED. The positive 
goes via another resistor. 1, 2, 1. 1, 2 and 1, 0 is 120 ohms. So there's that resistor, 120 ohms. And then the colour changing LED. And that is it. The colour changing LED actually has a little chip inside and three LEDs and it's when you supply it with a uh, current limited supply, it just cycles through the colours itself. It's quite odd that they've even bothered including this. You, you almost wonder, why didn't they then just shove it, cut it flush and just shove it through the end? Uh, rather, than, rather than actually take it down onto the circuit board and solder it. Maybe it was just so that if people pulled it, it would actually look like it was still connecting to the circuitry. And it does give you a clue as to how this is assembled, because if this... Uh, was threaded in and soldered and then placed in, you can then pull that loop uh, up the back of the circuit board. And it is a sort of high-ish voltage silicon insulated cable. Yeah, that's it. So that's it. That's what's actually in the lamp. A capacitive dropper with the inrush uh, current limiter, the capacitive dropper, the rectifier, a zener to cap the, open, the voltage across this, uh, the capacitor, and then a resistor and LED, and that is it. No electronic circuitry for the ionisation at all. That's a bit disappointing, but then again, it's not the first time that's happened.